<laughs> I'm uh, about to go into single population mean using the student T distribution, which is a little different than a Z distribution. Um, but I did want to take just a second to remind everybody, listen, school is not a sprint. It is a marathon. And we are closing in, including this lesson. There are six new lessons left in the year. Um, by the end of today, we will take a quiz. And I think that leaves three quizzes left during the year. I think. I'm not positive about that. And one more test after this and a final exam. So we're coming near the end and we have to keep our stride going. Just keep that stride going, working things out. Some of the material seems a little foreign when we first open it up. But if you lock yourself in a closet, think about this stuff. I think you'll find a whole lot of good comes out of it and that you're able to understand it a lot better than you thought you would be able to understand it. Now, um, I'm still not able to put up a whole bunch of review questions on this um, uh, into the slideshows at the beginning because, well, I'm putting the slideshows up before you take your test. But I will go back and include an extra video at the end with uh, two or three review questions on it. But I can include a review section or review question from the last class. And here it is. Take a second to read it. Do stop and start. And then I'll do one and then you'll do two. Okay. Okay. To determine the confidence interval on the mean weight of LED bulbs that are about to be shipped. 50 samples are measured and found to have a mean value of 45 ounces with a standard deviation of 2 ounces. Determine the confidence level interval on the mean shipping weight of LED lights with confidence levels of 90, 95, and 99%. So I'm going to do the 90. You're going to do the 90 and the, the 95 and the 99. So for the 90% confidence level, what do we do first? We got to figure out the white tails at the end of our diagram there. And that's 1 minus 0 0.9, which is 0 0.1. And then I got to remember there's two tails, so I divide by 2 and I get 0 0.05. So the white tail area is 0 0.05. That's step one. Now the calculator gets to work. It's the magician standing there waving the magic wand known as a TI-84. Let's see what he comes up with. Let's do second bars, inverse norm. The area you want is 0 0.05. 0 and 1 mean we're in Z-score mode. That gives us 1.645. Beautiful. A little more calculator work. The error bound measurement is 1.645 times. It's always, always, always because we have a sample here in uh, 50 samples and um, we are doing the confidence levels. It's always 2 over the square root of the number of samples, which is 50. So 1.645 times. I would do alpha y equals, make the fraction, and do 2 over square root 50. Put the parenthesis on there to close the end, just because that's kind of a little OCD-ish as I can be about that. And I get 0.465. So the magician in the calculator has gotten the middle two steps, and you only needed to know how to do the first. Now you need to do, or know to do, the next one, which is you take the mean, which is 45, and you subtract the error bound, and you add the error bound. Subtracting and adding, you get 44.535 and 45.465. And then you express your answer. The 90% confidence interval is 44.535 to 45.465. Make sure you express that in parentheses with a comma in between. Should look a lot like a coordinate. Now, one more time for review. Got to find the white area. Subtract the green area, the confidence interval area, from 1, divide by 2 because there's two tails. Let the calculator do its thing. Second bar's inverse norm. You take the area you just found, 0, 1. That gives you the z-score for that z of a over 2, the area over 2. The error bound measurement is 1.645, always whatever the answer is to second bar's inverse norm, multiplied by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, where n is the number of samples. Crunch those numbers out, you get 0.465. So the calculator does the second and third steps. You do the first and the fourth steps, which is, on the fourth step, subtract the error bound, add the error bound. And then just phrase up your answer. 90% confidence interval is, and then the two numbers you just found. That's it. Now, it seems awkward in the beginning, but by now, you've done enough of these that you should be like, hey, you know, I think I can do this. So let's do a little stop and start, and we'll do the next two. Go ahead. 
Okay, so for the 95% confidence level, this part's on you, not the calculator. 1 minus 0.95 is 0.05. You got to know to divide that by 2. Then you get 0.025. And then you have to know to put that into the inverse, inverse norm function on second bars. And that gives you the area, which is 0.025. Z-score mode, Z01. And you get 1.960. Error bound takes that 1.960 and always multiplies it by the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. That gives me 0.554. And then I do plus and minus. First, I minus the 0.554, and then I do plus the 0.554. That gives me the interval. Remember, the 45 is the middle of the green. So when you subtract the 0.554, and then you add the 0.554. That's giving you the symmetry around both sides. And then my 95% con confidence interval is 44.446 and 45.554. Makes sense that it would be a little bit of a wider interval than the 90% interval. All right, let's try the 99% interval. Go ahead, stop and start. Okay, so 99% confidence level. First, you find the white tails. 1 minus 99 is 0.01. Divide that by 2. Because you got two white tails, it's 0 0.005. That goes in the area of the inverse norm section. The 0 and 1 stay the same. They're always there when you're in z-score mode. That gives you 2.576. The error bound is that answer, 2.576, times it's always the same thing, it's always the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, so that's two over square root of 50, that gives me 0.729. So the calculator does the second and the third steps. You need to remember to do minus from the mean plus to the mean. 45 minus 0.729 is 44.271, 45 plus 0.729 is 45.729. And then express your answer properly. The 99% confidence interval is 44.272 to 45.792. And that, folks, is a good review of the work that we had been doing in the last lesson. If you can do that now, you have learned the last lesson. You're in great shape.